Welcome to my deep dive learning path where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole series. If you're wanting a good grounding on what Lambda extensions are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this next video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into the Lambda lifecycle and how extensions gives you more visibility and control into how Lambda works. Before extensions, there was only the Runtime API, which provides an HTTP API for the newer managed as well as custom runtimes to receive invocation events from Lambda. This is how functions receive events from the Lambda service and how they return function responses back to Lambda. The Runtime API endpoint actually sits within the execution environment and securely provides the connectivity between function code and the Lambda service. When you used a managed runtime, all the communication within the runtime API is handled by the provided runtime. You just focus on your code. When you bring custom runtimes to Lambda, you include code that communicates with the runtime API so your custom runtime can receive invocation events from Lambda and send back the results. Before extensions, there were only two parts to control the execution environment with Lambda, the runtime and the function. I'm going to go through the timeline of how the runtime and function interact, which runs from left to right. Lambda initializes the runtime, which then runs the function initialization code, which is the code outside the handler. This is the cold start. During an invocation, the runtime manages the function invocation and the function handler code runs. The runtime handles the communication between Lambda and the function. When the invocation finishes, Lambda freezes the execution environment so you don't pay for idle. When the next invoke comes in, Lambda unfreezes and reuses the execution environment for a warm start, and the runtime and function do their work. When there are no pending invocations or Lambda refreshes the environment, Lambda removes the execution environment. With extensions, we're introducing the Extensions API, which builds on the existing runtime API. Extension authors can use the Extensions API to register for function and execution environment lifecycle events such as invoke and shutdown. In response to these events, extensions can start new processes or run logic. Extensions can also use the logs API to register for and receive logs directly from Lambda without having to go via CloudWatch logs. Extensions allow integrations with the Lambda service by introducing the following changes to the Lambda lifecycle. There's an updated init phase with three discrete in tasks. Init, extensions in it, runtime in it, and function in it. This creates an order where extensions and the runtime can perform setup tasks before the function codes runs. Extensions also gives you greater control during the invocation. During the invoke phase, as before, the runtime requests the invocation event and invokes the function handler. Extensions plug into this and can now request lifecycle events from the Lambda service. They can run logic in response to these lifecycle events and, response to the, and respond to the Lambda service when they are done. The Lambda service freezes the execution environment when it hears back from the runtime and all extensions. In this way, extensions can influence the freeze-thaw behavior. We are now also exposing the shutdown phase to let extensions stop cleanly when the execution environment shuts down. The Lambda service sends a shutdown event which tells the runtime and extensions that the environment is, to, is about to be shut down. So let's take a look at what this looks like with the timeline. We can see here how the init phase of the Lambda lifecycle is enhanced. When setting up the execution environment, Lambda searches the slashed opt extensions folder and finds any extensions and runs them as separate processes. The extensions files do need to be executable for Lambda to run them. If not, you'll get an access denied message. This happens before the runtime starts. An extension initializes and can do some setup tasks. It registers with the extensions API to tell Lambda what events it wants to receive. It then completes other setup tasks, such as with the app config example, running a local HTTP server and caching configuration settings. For an observability extension, this could be registering with the observability platform and starting to gather telemetry data. A log extension would start its log streaming receiver. Then the runtime process starts and initializes the function to run the code outside the handler. You can see Lambda manages the runtime process. You then manage the code and configuration of extensions as well as your function as part of the function configuration. Then the function invokes and extensions continues processing. 
Lambda freezes the execution environment when all extensions signal they've finished processing and unfreeze when a new invocation comes in for a warm start. You can see the extension can do some processing after the invocation to, for example, process telemetry about that particular invocation. If there are no further pending invokes or Lambda refreshes the execution environment, as part of managing the service, the runtime shuts down. And then the extension has time to run some final tasks before the execution environment is removed. This could be to send out any remaining logs or telemetry data or notify or maybe close connections to other systems. So you can see Lambda is exposing more of the function lifecycle with three distinct phases, init, invoke, and shutdown, which extensions can tap into to allow your tools more visibility and control of the Lambda lifecycle. I go into even more detail in the video on building Lambda extensions using the Extensions API, where I'll show the individual API calls. So I've been through in more detail about all the APIs now available with Lambda extensions, the Runtime API, which we had before, and the new Extensions API, and also the Logs API. I went through how extensions change the Lambda lifecycle with the three changes to the init, invocation, and shutdown phases. I then, then went through the lifecycle timeline to see how extensions start before the runtime, can process telemetry about an invoke, uh, and after the runtime shuts down for any final tasks. In the next video, I'm going to be taking an even deeper look into the Lambda lifecycle and see how you can build an extension using the Extensions API. I'll walk through the timeline in a lot more detail showing you the API calls available. For plenty more information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and other learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions, and hopefully you get to put what you've seen into action. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.